Man, I hate these split embargoes where we have to do first impressions on one day and the review a couple of days later. Which means that you guys have to wait for two days for my detailed verdict on a newly launched product. And this time around, it's the Nothing Phone 2. Imagine if movie reviewers had to only give their first impressions on Friday and their detailed review on Sunday. How irritating would that be? Sorry for that rant. I had to get it out of my system. That aside, this is it. This is the detailed review of the Nothing Phone 2 and comparison against the OnePlus 11R. Thanks for being so patient for this video and for those who are new here, I'm Ashad. you're watching Track and Tech English, your place for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. The first thing that I want to talk about is what you get inside the box of these phones because with the nothing, all you get is a cable and a SIM ejector tool, that's about it. But inside the OnePlus 11 hours box, you get a proper 100 watt charger and a case as well. So while the packaging of the phone too is nice and fancy, you will have to pay extra for the accessories. That's something that you have to keep in mind. Now talking about the industrial design of the phone, both the phones are very similar in terms of the thickness and the weight. So yeah, they feel equally heavy and the weight distribution is done fairly well too. Now on the OnePlus 11 hour, you get curved glass on the back, curved glass on the front, which blends into this slim plastic frame. On the contrary, the Nothing Phone 2 has a slightly curved glass back on the rear which of course aids with the in-hand feel of the phone and on the front you get a flat glass back and on the side you've got this boxy uh, you know metal mid frame as well since there's more surface area on the side of the nothing phone too and then there's this slight little curve out here i think that it feels more reassuring to hold the nothing phone too compared to the oneplus 11r which also feels slightly slippery because of the texture that is there on the you know frosted glass back now there's Gorilla Glass 5 protection on the back of both these phones, but it's only nothing that offers you Gorilla Glass 5 protection on the front as well. I still don't know if you get any glass protection on the curved front glass of the 11R. Moreover, the Nothing Phone 2 has IP54 rating. There is no IP rating on the 11R. So when you look at the overall in-hand feel and the build quality of both these phones, the Nothing Phone 2 definitely feels more solidly put together. And of course that metal frame is very reassuring as well. Now talking about the functional elements of both these phones, on the 11R you do get the alert slider, which is iconic of course, it lets you switch between different modes like ring, silent or vibrate, which is very, very handy. But of course, nothing has the transparent glass back with the unique glyph lighting on the rear. Now, I've spent some more time since my hands-on video. If you haven't watched that yet, definitely go check it out. But my thoughts on this are slightly changed. I'll talk about that. I don't want to talk about essential glyphs. It's really nice for when you don't want to miss out any important messages from your important contacts or your important apps. But the way you said contacts works different I thought that you would immediately get access to all the contacts and then you can pick and choose them and whenever you get a message or a notification from them, it will stay on the glyph light, but that's not how it works. So if you have to set an essential notification on the glyph for WhatsApp, you'll have to pick from one of the contacts in the recent conversations. Or you can set for all individual messages or all group messages only, which is kind of odd because it did let me access all the contacts in the list, which was, you know, something that should have been there. Now, remember that glyph composer feature, which is of course made made by Swedish House Mafia. Well, initially it was awesome, but after a couple of days, the novelty wore off after I realized that I'm a really bad musician and I can't make great ringtones. Now on that curved glyph light where you can see the progress, the glyph timer and volume level indicators are really nice. Glyph timer works very well. In fact, I've actually used it a couple of times already, but the volume level indicator, when it works, it's very nice, but generally it's kind of buggy at the moment. Maybe nothing needs to issue an update to make it work properly. You know, the third party integration showcasing the glyph progress on Uber and Zomato. Well, Zomato integration hasn't come yet and Uber integration is the only one that is available right now. I really wish nothing works with Swiggy because that's an app that I use a lot. More than the newer features, the older features continue to be really useful. For example, the flip to glyph so that, you know, it goes on to mute mode. And apart from that, the wiggle to see how much charge status is there in the exclamation mark. Damn nice. What I do particularly like about the glyph light is the fact that you can actually adjust the level of the brightness now. And that is very, very useful because I remember taking the Nothing Phone 1 inside a theater once and it just blinks so bright and that is definitely distracting for somebody when they're actually concentrating on a movie in a dark silent hall. Thankfully, you can reduce the brightness if you still want to keep it on or if you don't want to switch it off, that is. See, with the glyph lighting feature, what I've realized is that you should think of it as a notifications plus plus mechanism for phones and then you can temper your expectations accordingly and maybe then you will be satisfied with whatever's available. But definitely, there is still a lot of scope for improvement and I'm sure that nothing is working on it as well. All right, let's move on from the glyphs 
contrast to all the other functional elements that are present on these phones. Starting off with the fact that the USB Type-C port at the bottom is USB Type-C 2.0 speeds, which is a huge letdown considering the fact that you get Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, LPDDR5 RAM, and UFS 3.1 storage, but USB 2.0 should have been USB 3.1. By the way, the 11R has one other functional advantage and that is the fact that you get an infrared blaster and both these phones, of course, do have a SIM card tray that accepts two dual nano SIM cards. When you talk about the build quality and the functionality, I think that the Nothing Phone 2 is definitely better than the OnePlus 11R. In fact, it even looks better if you ask me because the OnePlus 11R doesn't have any distinctive identity of its own. It's just OnePlus 11, but like without the Hasselblad branding, this one looks very, very nice. Of course, it looks very similar to the phone one, but it's a head turner, don't you think so? All right, let's talk about the display on the Nothing Phone 2. Now you have a 6.7 inch Full HD Plus AMOLED panel. It's an LTPO display with 120 Hertz refresh rate as well. Another thing that I absolutely love on this phone is the fact that the bezels on all four sides are equally sized. Of course, they're not extremely slim, but for symmetry, that's good. The 11 RS is slightly larger 6.74 inch display, but higher resolution of 1.5K. And apart from that, you get 120 Hz, uh, you know, refresh rate as well. And it's a curved panel too. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Now, like I mentioned, the Nothing Phone 2 has LTPO, so it can go as low as 1 Hz and as high as 120 Hz. Now, LTPO panels are very rare in its price category. So Nothing has definitely gone out of its way to include one. And in our testing, I noticed that it does go down to 1 Hz and 10 Hz. So it should definitely help with battery life improvements. But I feel that it could have been tuned slightly better. Now when you're talking about color accuracy on both these displays on the 11R you have to switch to the professional mode and the display P3 mode and you get really good color accuracy and on the Nothing Phone 2 switch to standard mode and both of these are very good at you know almost close to natural color tones. In YouTube HDR playback the tuning is absolutely fantastic on the Nothing Phone 2 and almost equally good on the 11R. What I expected with the 11R was slightly better highlight control but it's still very very close and this is just me getting very very specific with certain things but otherwise very good. By the way with the Nothing Phone 2 when you're watching HDR content in a 10% peak window it can reach a peak brightness of 1600 nits whereas the 11R can reach 1450 nits. However all that HDR tuning felt pointless on the Nothing Phone 2 for me because I watch a lot of Netflix on my phone and there's no HDR playback available on the phone 2 and it's not coming either, which is a pity. It's available on the 11R, by the way. Now, when you're talking about regular usage and you take the phone outdoors, in high brightness mode, the Nothing Phone 2 can reach a peak brightness of 1000 nits, whereas the OnePlus 11R can reach a peak brightness of 900 nits. You cannot really tell the difference with naked eye, but you know, both get equally bright outdoors and you shouldn't have a problem reading anything on the screen. Now, closing the multimedia loop on these phones is the stereo speaker setup. On the Nothing Phone 2, the secondary speaker is the earpiece, and on the OnePlus, you get dedicated stereo speakers. Also on the 11R, you get Dolby Atmos support as well which is not available on nothing the phone 2 does get really loud but not nearly as rich and as detailed as the 11 r does take a listen for yourself and let me know what you guys think Also, of course, the phones do not have a headphone jack, so you will have to use a dongle if you want to connect a pair of wired earphones, which is a huge concern for someone like me. But if you're using, uh, you know, truly wireless earphones, and if they support high-res Bluetooth codecs like LHDC and LDAC, that's supported on these phones, no problems there. Now, since both these phones have an AMOLED panel, you do get an in-display fingerprint scanner. Both are super fast to unlock, absolutely no concerns there. But the haptic feedback on OnePlus is tighter, it's crisper, compared to the Phone 2. The Phone 2's haptic feedback is definitely slightly improved from the Phone 1, but it could have been better in my opinion. I have to tell you guys one thing, the Phone 2 does come with a pre-applied screen protector and the quality of the screen protector is absolutely terrible. So use it only till you buy a new one. Otherwise, just remove it. It's scratched up really badly already. Display-wise, I feel like the 11R has a slight edge over the Nothing Phone 2. And no, that's not because it is slightly curved. All right, let's talk about the performance. Let's talk about testing. Both these phones have Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, LPDDR5 RAM, UFS 3.1 storage. Yes, we are aware of that. But how do they perform in real life? Well, in Android 2 version 9, the 11R scored slightly higher. In Android 2 version 10, the Nothing Phone 2 scored slightly higher. So, I mean, uh, equally matched, we'd say. Although in Geekbench, uh, I noticed that the Nothing Phone 2 did score higher than the, uh, you know, OnePlus 11R. But again, it's all Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, very powerful, 
these are just numbers. But what matters is the throttling performance and in our CPU throttle test, where we engage 40 threads for 30 minutes, the 11R didn't throttle as much as the phone 2 did. Although in the GPU stability test that we ran with 3 Mark Wildlife's test test, what I noticed is that the 11R and the phone 2 are equally matched in GPU stability, but the 11R gets slightly warmer compared to the nothing phone 2. Now we've also started playing Genshin Impact on our test phones for 30 minutes to know how they perform. Well, the 11R returned higher average frames per second, compared to the Nothing Phone 2, but yes, the 11R also did get slightly warmer compared to the Nothing Phone 2. But it's not like the 11R gets really hot or anything, it's in the 41-42 degree range, which is actually very well controlled. And apart from that, we were running all of these tests in the performance mode, so if you're not using in performance mode, this phone doesn't get hot. In fact, both these phones don't get hot at all. But performance and battery life is linked here. I feel that the extra thermal efficiency boost that you get with the Nothing Phone 2 leads in extra battery life as well. So the battery life on the Nothing Phone 2, I'm very happy to report, is fantastic. I got a screen on time of 7 hours with my extremely stressful usage which can actually extend up to 8 hours on regular usage. In comparison, the 11 hour can do about 6 hours to 7 hours depending on your usage. So yeah, you can expect the Nothing Phone 2 to last slightly longer than the 11 hour but the 11 hour has one huge advantage and that is of course the charging speeds. The 11 hour with its 100 watt charger can charge from 0 to 100 in 25 minutes whereas the Nothing Phone 2 takes 55 minutes with 45 watt charging. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of super fast charging but then when a phone charges under 30 minutes, you really do want to give it that benefit of doubt, right? But it doesn't end there because the Nothing Phone 2 has 15 watt wireless charging and 5 watt reverse wireless charging, which again is something that is not available on the 11R. Now, a premium phone with IP rating and wireless charging is something that a lot of people care for and nothing has gone ahead and given that. So for people who care about wireless charging, this will be really, really useful. And that's generally useful for somebody like me who has a wireless charger in the car and it's available at disposal. So it does come in really handy. When you talk about performance the oneplus 11r is better for gaming that's for sure because it throttles less and uh, it doesn't drop frames as much as the phone 2 does i feel that phone 2's engineers should be slightly less risk averse put out a ota update so that it can push a couple more degrees so that it doesn't throttle performance. But yeah, I mean, they have to do it without affecting the battery life because the battery life right now is fantastic. All right, let's talk about 5G support now. Nothing Phone 2 has support for 19 5G bands and this is like a global phone, right? So when you take it out internationally, all of that, it will support almost every single, uh, you know, network out there. And of course, it supports Airtel and Geo very well. It is very fast with the network. On the OnePlus 11R, you shouldn't have any problem in India for sure. The N77, N78 bands are supported and of course, it's got support for 9 5G bands. There's one thing I must definitely talk about these phones is that they have the cleanest, clearest sounding earpieces that I've used in a long time. Calls sound really, really good. And of course, the rest of the network connectivity elements like Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.3, NFC support is available on both these phones. No problems there. Now, of course, software experience is what makes a Nothing phone or a OnePlus phone desirable. So Nothing OS 2 and Oxygen OS 13 based on Android 13 are two of the most premium, cleanest installs of Android that you will find on a phone. Moreover, these phones are expected to get three years of software updates and four years of security updates as well, both of them, which is a good thing. Let me quickly summarize what's good and bad about, uh, you know, the software experience of these phones. The UI animations are faster and more responsive on the phone too, compared to the 11R. Oxygen OS on 11R is also fast, but nothing OS 2 just feels even faster and slicker, almost like OnePlus uh, Oxygen OS back in the day. The new monochrome theme with icons and widgets is a nice touch on the Nothing OS 2. Plus the fact that you can add an emoji cover art, oh my God, so cute. There are a couple of experimental features that let you bump up the touch sampling rate while gaming and show the battery case and buds level when an AirPods is connected. That's available on the Nothing OS 2 as well. That's about it for Nothing OS 2 because Nothing really doesn't want to do too much with stock Android, just add a few embellishments on top of it so that it it enhances your experience. Oxygen OS on the flip side has more features. There's the Zen mode, there's a shelf, game tools, Oppo's theme store and the internet app as well. Okay, maybe the last two could have been avoided. If you're not really nitpicking, there's nothing really separating the two when it comes to the software experience that you can expect from these phones. So with the Nothing Fold 2, nothing has upgraded the cameras and not added a telephoto, unfortunately, but you do get a primary Sony IMX 890 sensor, which is a 50 MP sensor and the same 50 MP Samsung JN1 ultra wide angle camera and a 32 megapixel selfie camera. On the OnePlus 11R, you've got the same primary sensor, but an 8 MP ultra 
ultrawide, a 2 MP macro and a 16 MP selfie camera on the front. Let's take a look at the differences in pictures. When you look at the pictures from the primary camera and add the details at 100% crop, OnePlus over sharpens the image and nothing keeps it natural which is a good thing. As for the color accuracy, nothing is far superior compared to OnePlus. Every single picture that I took looks close to natural. HDR performance on both these phones looks nearly identical, but nothing does manage to control the noise in the shadows slightly better. However, apart from that, it's not like the OnePlus 11R has far better HDR performance either. Now, while there is no telephoto, nothing told me at the briefing that the 2X on this phone, the digitally zoomed 2X works like super zoom. So I tested it out. But you know what, after looking at these pictures, I can't really tell a substantial improvement or anything. It looks the same as a digitally cropped image. Now, when capturing friends and family, nothing phone 2 is leagues above the OnePlus 11R. The skin tones are so close to natural, despite the fact that, you know, details are very similar. It's the right skin tone that, you know, makes you want to take pictures with the phone 2 more than the 11R. But in complex scenes with multiple sources of light with high dynamic range, the phone 2 struggles with capturing the right exposure on the face where the 11R gets it slightly better. Also, the portrait mode algorithm is definitely not as good as the 11R. Yes, the skin tones are off on the 11R, but the edge cutout and the depth mapping is just so much better in comparison to the phone 2, which messes it up badly. Plus, there's a loss of detail too when you look at it at close crop. In fact, if you shoot a portrait sample in HDR, well, the phone too makes it look very, very soft. Clearly, nothing has to work a lot on improving its portrait processing. I really hope nothing's engineers are working on it. Low light processing is again better on OnePlus. You get a brighter exposure. You can see more details at close crop and slightly better details from the shadows as well. Now, moving on to the 50 MP ultra wide angle camera, the Nothing Phone 2 brings back a win once again. You get far more details than the OnePlus 11R's 8 MP camera, which was you know, not really a surprise. The HDR performance is also way better and so is the low light performance. But the one thing that matters when it comes to ultra wide angle camera performance is the color sense consistency, which is missing on both these phones. But you know what, when I was testing the Nothing Phone 1, I remember that the color science consistency became better with updates. OnePlus 11R has had the chance to improve the color science consistency. The Phone 2 hasn't had that chance yet. Maybe once it gets that chance, it will improve. Now, one area where that ultra wide angle camera comes in really handy is when you're shooting macro pictures. Just take a look at the macro shot with the Fold 2 compared to the macro shot with the OnePlus 11R. I don't even have to say it, which one's better. Also, Nothing's selfie camera is incredibly well tuned. I was so surprised at how good it is. Only when the light is correct though, that is important, but the skin tone is fantastic. The details are there. I just love the selfies from this phone. And I meant it when I said only when the light is good because just take a look at the HDR selfies. They're not as good. Unlike the portraits from the regular camera, portrait selfies are not too bad, but Nothing's engineers should try to replicate that DSLR look by creating a gradual blur instead of making it look like a Photoshop cutout where you know, you've pasted the image and the, the entire background is blurred. While the selfies on the Nothing Phone 2 are good in daylight, in low light, if they are undoubtedly better on OnePlus, you get super exposure and details as well. Talking about video recording, Nothing has done a fairly good job. It matches up to OnePlus in terms of max recording quality of 4K 60fps, plus the stabilization is equally well done, and I found that it sounds better too. 4K 60fps video recording on the Nothing Phone 2 and the OnePlus 11R, this is what the quality looks like. OK 60fps video recording on the Nothing Phone 2 and the OnePlus 11R, this is what the quality looks like. In fact, the Phone 2 does a good job even in low light video recording and beats the OnePlus in terms of details, exposure and color rendition. Of course, sound recording continues to be better too. Selfie video recording again is possible at higher 60fps compared to 30fps on OnePlus, which gives it a leg up once again. So, you know, after using the phone too, there were times when its brilliance caught me by surprise, especially when I was shooting my friends and family and when I was taking selfies. So what OnePlus has nailed is the color science, basically just got the color right every single time. And apart from that, the skin tones as well. But when you present the phone with a tough lighting condition and a human face, it kind of struggles which is an area where nothing definitely needs to improve and I hope that you know folks over at nothing are watching this as well but between these two phones I think that the nothing phone 2 definitely has a better camera I should definitely check out if the nothing phone 2 has a better camera than something from Samsung or even the OnePlus 11 for that matter. Now the Phone 2 is definitely a good upgrade over the Phone 1, that's for sure, but it has moved up a category as well, which means that the audience base will also shrink as a result. That said, is it worth the asking price of 45,000 or you know, whatever you get with discounts? 
I'd say absolutely yes. In fact, I'd recommend the phone too to anyone watching this video, whether you're subscribed to this channel or not. Although if you ask me if the Nothing Phone 2 is better than the OnePlus 11R, it's such a closely fought battle that I'm finding it very difficult to give you an objective answer. So I will give you a subjective one, one that is based on my gut feeling. Which one should you pick? Should you pick the Phone 2? Should you pick the 11R? Well, my gut says, spend that extra, go for the Phone 2. Also to understand that gut feeling of mine, nothing has made it easier for you to go and experience this phone offline. So I would suggest you go and do that before you buy one. Ideally, if that option is available, you should do that for every single phone. You do that with cars as well, right? You test drive one. So test drive the nothing phone too. Maybe you will like it. But I must say this, if you do buy the OnePlus 11R instead, that wouldn't be a wrong decision either. Because this phone is good too, man. I know that I haven't given you a straight answer. Hopefully this video helps. If it doesn't, and if you have any personal sort of requirements, maybe just type down your use case. What is the current phone you're using? So I can probably help you out better. And I will work on more videos because there are so many phones that have launched. So I'll get down to that and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.